Ontario's election now in full swing. Four party leaders making their way north to duke it out in a debate focused on northern Ontario issues. It's going to be held in North Bay. Tomorrow's debate, hosted by the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities, will feature the leaders of the Ontario Progressive Conservatives, Doug Ford, NDP, Andrea Horvath, and the Liberal leader, Stephen Del Duca, and the Green Party, Mike Schreiner. Where do the parties stand, though, ahead of tomorrow's debate? This on a day when the Liberals finally released their costed, fully costed platform, and affordability is dominating the campaign. We've got exclusive new numbers today from Nick Nanos and Nanos Research, and I want to show you them. The PCs still lead the pack, but they've dipped ever so slightly from support from last week. They're, they've gone from 36.9% to 35.4%. But the Liberals and the NDP neither gained nor lost ground, staying put at 30.4 and 23.7% respectively. The Greens slightly down to 4.2%. But the biggest gains so far have been for the new uh, blue party, the upstart right wing party is at 3.6%, up from 0.9%. Derek Sloan's Ontario party dropped to 1.4%. But what about a race for Ontario's preferred premier? And this is where it kind of gets interesting. PC leader Doug Ford still tops the list at 29%, despite dropping slightly from last week. But it's Liberal leader Stephen Del Duca, who's leapt ahead of NDP leader Andrea Horvath. Uh, they're at 24 and 20% respectively. Uh, the Liberals released their platform today, focusing on things like a buck a ride for public transport and more affordable housing. Um, so maybe that has something to do with it, or maybe... That's just, we haven't seen the impact of that. None of the above, by the way, is at 9% pulled higher than the rest of the remaining candidates. So today, uh, as I said, they've released their platform. The Liberals say they'll balance the budget by 26, 27, but they'll have to draw on the contingency fund. And they say, you know, they may not be able to balance it if other events happen. So um, how is this playing out? Uh, let's bring in the founder of Nanos Research and the chief data scientist, Nick Nanos, for a segment. We're bringing back for the election, Nanos on the numbers. Okay, Nick. Um, not a lot of movement in this, Nick. Uh, give me a sense of what's driving the election and what you're seeing beneath the numbers. Well, you know, the, the big movement in the, in the first week was actually on uh, who Ontarians would prefer as the premier. You know, a seven-point increase for Del Duca should not be dismissed. Probably this has to do not just with the announcements, but the fact that the guy hasn't made a mistake, at least in, in week one. We also know that leadership is always a key dimension that people vote on, which means that if the Del Duca numbers continue to consolidate or increase, we might see some movement in the Liberal numbers in, in the next week or so. The other thing that I'm looking at, Evan, are those other parties, maybe other is a bit too harsh, the New Blue Movement and the Ontario Party. Together, they, they're garnering about 5% support. Very similar, Evan, if you remember, to the People's Party of Canada. And uh, the big question is, will Doug Ford and the Progressive Conservatives have to worry about two more right-wing populist-style parties that might be siphoning off perhaps a couple percentage points mm. out of the blue column? Right, so a couple of interesting. Last week you'd said that the liberal brand was polling way ahead of the liberal leader. No one knew Stephen Del Duca. He's starting to tick up. Doug Ford's still the preferred premier, but now he's got to worry about, as you say, 5% on the right. What about Andrea Horvath? She's in her, her fourth campaign. Is she gaining traction? Well, her numbers are, are basically flat. Uh, you know, compared to the, the first wave, you know, the, the ballot numbers are about the same. There's a bit of negative pressure on her preferred premier numbers. But, you know, with this debate uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the North, it's going to be critical because the North is, is traditionally very good for the New Democrats. It's one of the kind of bedrocks of support. So, you know, watch out for Andrea Horvath. There'll probably be pressure, her own pressure that she'll put on herself to have a good showing in this debate because the reality is, is if the Del Duca brand starts to build, that'll be bad news for Horvath, both personally and in terms of ballot support for her party. The, just last thing, we cannot leave the discussion without talking about gas prices, not only in Ontario, but across the country in BC and Quebec. Um, I'm sure it's a big factor in the Northern leaders debate, but what is the driving issue right now? Is it gas prices and, and who's impacted? Is it just generally affordability? 
Well, you know, last week the driving issue in the CDV CP24 nano survey happened to be healthcare and then a series of economic issues, including inflation and the economy and jobs and so forth. But we're going to be, we're not going to scoop ourselves, Evan, because tomorrow we'll have a new survey on issues. And uh, I'm not going to say that you're prescient. But I think that was a very good question to ask about uh, the rising cost of gas, because uh, we're going to see some very interesting movement in the past week in terms of what Ontarians are focused on after the first week of the provincial election campaign. Yeah, and look, it's so in everybody's face. It's in their, it's frankly, it's in their tank. Um, the, the, Nick, the Liberals released their costed platform today. Do these things make any impact on, on, on a campaign? Do, the, do those things matter? I mean, it, I remember Jean Chrétien released the, the Red Book in that famous federal campaign. That was consequential. Do these things matter? Well, the Red Book was an exception. I would say it's a pass-fail. Uh, what the Liberals cannot afford is a mistake in their platform. And you know what, Evan? That applies to both the Progressive Conservatives and the New Democrats. If there's any major flaw or problem in the platform, that could be politically lethal for any of the front-running parties. All right. The, the first debate tomorrow. Again, Doug Ford still uh, quite out front in terms of the preferred leader and the conserv Progressive Conservatives still out front. But uh, campaigns matter, so we'll find out what happens. Uh, and Nick will be back tomorrow with more data. Nanos Research, Nick Nanos. Thanks, Nick. Take it easy.